Hey, guess what? I've just won a game of Apex Legends, and that's something that doesn't usually happen. The day I won, however, I switched out my monitor from a 32-inch cello W3203 SH was the model number to the new AOC24 G2U. Is this the reason I won? Quite possibly. The AOC24 G2U is a follow-on from last year's G1, which was a superb little monitor indeed, and one of my favourite budget gaming monitors last year. I very much enjoyed having the G1 on my desk, and it's now starting to go the same kind of way with the G2. Now, I opted for the 24-inch variant. From a gamer's standpoint, I've had 27-inch monitors on the desk before, which seem to be a common size people go for, but with 24-inch, it means everything is much smaller, and you're not relying on your peripheral vision to scope out enemies coming into frame while playing games. There is a 27-inch model available too if the 24-inch is too small, but definitely, if you can, take a look at both of them. I thought 24 was going to be a little bit too small at first, but I've got used to it and I actually quite enjoy it. Now, the AOC 24G2U uses an IPS display which can hit a resolution of 1920x1080p with a refresh rate of 144Hz, and because of its IPS display, it can produce some wonderful colours inside of games, and I really noticed this while playing Destiny 2. The new Shadow Keep DLC is based on the moon, and you have to traverse dimly lit caves during your objectives. Everything is dark and dank with a real juxtaposition when against flashing lasers and exploding electric grenades. But the whole thing is wrapped up in a nice sleek near bezel-less frame that stands on a very sharp looking monitor stand. The side and the top bezels almost sink into the actual frame itself, putting them kind of on the same plane as the monitor. There's, there's no kind of edge along the actual bezel frame here. Now the stand does actually have some red detailing down here that you can see and there is also red going across the bottom of the actual gaming monitor itself and you've got some kind of V-shaped really quite harsh jagged red detailing on the back as well now this is really following on from previous aoc gaming offerings and it's almost a staple of their design it's subtle and it does actually look quite tidy if i do say so myself now the monitor has a 3.5 to 21.5 degree tilt has a minus 30 to 30 degree swivel and raises up and down to 130 millimeters and if you're so way inclined you can also twist the monitor into a vertical aspect ratio on the rear of the monitor you will find a display port 1.2 and two HDMI 1.4 inputs, both of which AOC provide cables for in the box. There are also four USB 3.0 inputs, which is hugely generous for a monitor, and it saves me using inputs on the back of my tower for my mouse and keyboard or my webcam for when I'm streaming or a games controller. I just plug them straight into the monitor, into the back, and everything worked fine. Now to finish off, there is a line in and a headphone out, and also two two watt speakers, which sound all right, but as expected, they are very tinny. I wouldn't recommend using these if you're doing any kind of serious gaming, just stick a set of headphones into the monitor instead. In terms of screen detail, there's already a lot going for this monitor. Now, I've already spoken a little about my experience with Destiny 2, but what about everything else? Now, let's dive into the spec and what to expect from the AOC 24G2U. The monitor, as we said, uses an IPS panel with a 144Hz refresh rate with an MRPT of 1 milliseconds. It can hit 126% of the sRGB color spectrum, which is absolutely fantastic. Viewing angles are absolutely superb thanks to the IPS display and with a dynamic contrast ratio of 80 million to 1, which is huge, uh, ensures your image stays alive with lots of rich colour and detail in those highlights and shadowy areas. It has free sync support for any of you AMD heads out there, although I will say during my testing I was using an NVIDIA GTX 980 Ti, so I didn't really take much advantage of the free sync on there. As I've said in previous reviews though, for the games I play and the streaming I do, I don't really need to upgrade my graphics card yet. Everything inside of games felt super smooth with the monitor. Now coming from my cello with a 5 millisecond response time, dropping from 5 milliseconds down to 1 milliseconds, there were some notable differences, especially with faster paced games. Apex Legends, my battle royale of choice, uh, looked notably smoother as I was sliding and jumping around the map, especially when it came to gunfights. Even on my PlayStation 4, I spent a lot of time reviewing this monitor playing Marvel Spider-Man, and I must say, especially during the darker scenes where, for example, Mr. Negative is flashing off his powers, uh, during that boss fight, or during the final boss fight against Dr. Octavius. I've just finished Spider-Man, so uh, 
Kudos to me, I suppose. The bright flames look great during that scene against the musky backdrop, and even the bright purple Oscorp logo was incredibly vivid against the night sky. Now, I've personally not noticed any kind of screen tearing or anything like that when using this monitor. I do turn off VSync pretty much all games I play and just rely on it hitting the maximum frames per second that it can. Now, in slower games uh, that I've been playing, like Planet Zoo, for example, Everything looked absolutely fantastic and the colors absolutely popped in that game. It looked really, really good. In true AOC fashion, they've given users a number of game focus settings on their monitor, which range from shadow control to game color and overdrive setting, which is designed to push the monitor response time setting. In my menu, I used the Gamer One custom profile and dropped the color down to eight to save images looking too oversaturated and my overdrive setting to the weak option. Anything set higher than this caused some ghosting and artifacting on the monitor and was somewhat off-putting. Not sure if AOC has made any kind of significant improvements in this area from the original G1 monitor, but it's nice to see them return nonetheless. The biggest problem with their menu system though is that it's so hard to get from one menu to the other. Having the older style button system on the underside of the uh, right just down here uh, is a little dated now. I would have loved to have seen them update it to some kind of joystick like we've seen on the LG monitors of late, but uh, here's hoping that they do this for the G3. It takes some getting used to, I must admit, with these buttons down here, and as the symbols of each button are the same color as the frame, it makes it very annoying to know which button you need to press next. Next, as the on-screen prompts are very minimal as well. Alongside this, I set my contrast to 60 and brightness to 100. There is an eco mode where it adjusts your settings on the fly, but the game setting just made my images look too dark. Now, one word of advice is do not touch the HDR effect either. It doesn't do anything for your image, it doesn't do it justice, and again, it makes it look very dark. So to finish up, AOC do a fantastic job with their budget gaming monitors. I said it before with the G1, and I will definitely say it again with the AOC 24 G2U, and that is go and get one. If you're on a budget but want the best performance you could possibly get, then the AOC 24G2U would be the monitor for you. It's got a fantastic refresh rate and response time, and the colors are hugely vivid and make your games look super sharp. I would have liked to have hit the 1440p resolution, but you can't have everything, right? And if you're in a situation like me where you're still rocking a GTX 980 Ti, then you'll be gaming at 1080p anyway and still manage to hit a decent frame rate. So thank you very much for checking out our video review of the AOC 24G2U gaming monitor. If you enjoyed this video, then do click that like button. Please subscribe to keep up with all of our latest gaming and tech videos. And also let us know in the comments below what you think about this monitor, whether you would game on this monitor uh, yourself or get one for your own PC setups. Let me know in the comments below. Lastly, don't forget, in the uh, description below we have got a link to our twitch account where we are streaming now so do go and check us out over on twitch it will be greatly appreciated for that as well as i say thank you very much for watching and we will see you in our next review